Hey everyone, I'm Boone, and today I have a really fun project inside of Adobe After Effects. Now for this particular tutorial, I'm not really focusing on animation. I'm more focusing on the tools and techniques of how you create the elements of this particular graphic. Now if you want to follow along, just follow the link in the video description. That'll take you to my website where you can download the project files. Now, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate user, I'm sure you're going to learn something. There's so much going on in this tutorial. I'm going to be creating shape layers, using repeaters, putting text on a path. It's going to be fun, and you're going to learn a lot. And speaking of learning, it's time for a word from today's sponsor. So today's video is brought to you by Skillshare, an online learning community with thousands of classes covering dozens of creative and entrepreneurial skills. I've had Skillshare for over three years now, and I've taken a bunch of classes. They're all great. I've taken classes on illustration, photography, animation, and they have a bunch of options specifically for After Effects. They have animation for illustration, simple character animation, creating a walk cycle, hand lettering, simple character lip syncing, how to create animated GIFs, animation for graphic designers, the list goes on. It's also incredibly affordable. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. And because Skillshare is sponsoring this video, you can sign up using the link in the video description and get a two month free trial. So follow that link and get started. All right, I'm inside of Adobe After Effects and I have two graphic elements in here right now. First, I downloaded the official presidential seal. This is for a reference. I can pull the color samples off of here and I can just use it as a visual reference, try to match this font and you know match the look. Also, I already have this graphic element, and I got this from a book called The Map Design Toolbox. I'm gonna leave a link in the video description if you wanna pick up a copy of this book. It's really, really cool. I'm not an affiliate, so I don't make any commission if you buy it through that link. I just think it's a really great product, and I use it all the time. It's really, really cool, so go check it out. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now, the first thing I wanna do is add text. So I'm gonna go grab my text tool, and then I'm gonna go type in, in all caps, Seal of the President of the United States. I'm going to be using the Align panel a lot, so just go ahead and open that up. Now I'm going to grab this. We'll center that. What I want to do first is match that font. So really close font is Times New Roman Regular. Okay, so we have our text. Now I want to put this text on a circular path. So to do that, I'm going to create a mask ellipse and then we'll put it on there. Now I'm trying to keep everything centered up. So one way to help us keep everything center is to use rulers and guides. So if you go up to view, you can select uh, show rulers and now we have these rulers up here. And to use guides, I can just grab and pull down and now we can see a guide. And if I right click or control click on it, I can edit the position. So I'm going to be using some mad math skills inside of this tutorial so to you know perfectly position these guides. So I'm going to click edit position and we can manually type in a pixel value. So this is 1920 by 1080. So I simply need to divide those to get those right in the center vertically. So vertically it's going to be half of 1080 which is 540. Select OK and that centers that and I'm going to grab another guide and click on this one. And this one's half of 1920, which is what? It's 960. Select OK. And just to double check that, I'm going to turn on title action safe. That You see this little area down here. I can actually turn on all of my assets or all of my grids and guides and rulers down there. So now if I zoom in, you can see that these are center. Now to keep those from moving, I'm going to go to view lock guides. And now I'm ready to rock and roll. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the title action safe. Now I'm going to create this mask. So I'm going to first select the text layer and then I'm going to go up here and grab the ellipse tool. And if I don't have the text layer selected, it's going to create a shape layer. So it's really important that I have this selected. Now I'm going to go to the center and we're going to create this from the center out. So I'm going to go here and then click and drag from the center. And I need to hit two keyboard shortcuts. First I'm going to hit shift to constrain the proportions. Then I'm going to hit the command or control key to, um, you know, constrain that or to keep that centered. And I'm going to make it about this big. Now release. So now I have my mask. I'm going to go back to the selection tool. You can see it down here. Now to put my text on that, it's really easy. I just go to text and then you'll see path options here. I'm going to select that. And then there's a little drop down menu here and I can select mask one. And now my text is on the path. 
So if I expand this, you're going to see we have a couple of different options to customize this text. First of all, we don't want it in this direction, so I'm going to reverse the path. And now we can see it's on the outside here. It's looking a little bit better. Then I'm going to select Force Alignment, and that automatically aligns everything, but that is not looking good. And I want it to be, if we look at our reference, let's pull up the reference again and zoom out a little. You can see it starts here and goes all the way over to here. So what I can do is I can adjust these first and last margins to get it exactly where I want it now that this force align is on. So let's drag here. So now you can see I've got the, the beginning. This is the first margin. This is the last margin here. And I can also go up and grab these and manually move them this way. So now I can just do that, put it down here, and then bring this one over here. Now, once again, if you want to get really mathematical about it, I can add another guide, and I need to unlock the guide so I can actually manipulate them. And if I click on this, I can do even more math. I can do an, a freaking equation in here. So I can, let's say I want to have two guides that are equidistant from the center. So we know the center is, um, what is it, 960? 960, and let's just say um, minus 150 pixels. And now we've got one right there. Now I can grab another one and do the same thing, just add it. 960 plus 150 pixels. Now I've got a guide here, and now I can kind of eyeball these in, and um, that's looking good. Now I can get rid of these if I want. And I'll go back and I'll lock those guides. Okay, so now I can go in here and quickly format this. Let's say I want to bring the size up a little bit, and then I want to change just a few words. I'll make the of those uh, a little bit smaller. So we'll bring those down to 50 pixels. Well, the rest will be at 75. So you see that it will automatically adjust. You know, it's forcing that alignment with the, the to adhere to those margins, which, which is cool. I could make a template out of this. I could even change a word here. Um, you know, make the Dumble Doofus of the United States. And look at that, still fits perfectly. Okay, so my text is all set and ready to go. Now I want to create my star elements. So down here, I'm going to have three stars perfectly aligned in this little gap here, and then I'm going to have another inner circle of stars. The first thing I want to do is go ahead and add another guide um, at the bottom here to kind of help me with the placement, kind of eyeball it, and make sure that the guides are locked. There we go, lock that. And now I'm going to go and grab the star tool and make sure that my text is not selected so it doesn't create another mask. Now I'm going to zoom in here, and what I want to do is I want to create a star that's perfectly aligned down here right as I create it. That's very important that it's aligned to this vertical um, um, area or position down here. So I'm going to click and drag, and there's two keyboard shortcuts I'm going to use here. First is Shift to keep this upright, and the next is Spacebar to move it around. Now I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Right there is looking good. Okay. So that's placed, but I need three of them. So the way we're going to do this is, well, first I'm going to rename this, call it three stars. I have my polystar element down here. If I open this up, you can see all of the assets are here. I'm going to close this. I want to add a repeater. So I'm going to go to this Add button, and if you look right here, I can click on Repeater. And that goes ahead and actually it adds three copies, or we have three copies here, which is what we want but we want it to follow along this path and be perfectly aligned. So I can adjust all of that right here in the repeater options. Now repeaters are funky, you need to make sure, that's why I placed this element right when I dropped it, I placed it there to make sure it's perfectly aligned. If I were to move it around, it's gonna change your repeater settings. So try to drop that and align it perfectly when you first place it. Now, three copies is fine. I'm gonna go down to the transform properties of the repeater and First thing I want to do is adjust the position. We don't want these to be 100 pixels away from each other. We're going to press 0 first because we want to rotate it. And now I'm going to adjust the rotation. And as I adjust the rotation, now you're going to see that it's rotating around the center here because of where we placed it. And we want it to be maybe this far away. And now we want to align it. So how do we align it? All I need to do now is go to the offset here, right under copies, and I can do negative one, and now our stars are aligned. Pretty cool. Okay, so we have our three stars here. Now we want to create our inner row of circles. 
So I'm just gonna go ahead and duplicate this. And I don't know how many the seal actually has, but let's make some creative decisions here. And I'm gonna call this 50 stars. So we're just gonna do 50 stars. Now I'm gonna open this up and we'll go down to contents, open up the repeater, and we're gonna go to copies first. We're gonna do 50 and we're gonna set the offset to zero. And now I need to go down to the transformation properties. This is where it gets kind of bonkers because if you look at this, this is where it's can you can get confused really fast. So if we take a bird's eye view of this, we have the polystar element, which has its own kind of attributes here. It has its own transformation properties. Then we have a repeater that has its own transformation properties. Then we have the overall layer, which has its own transformation properties. So it's no wonder that you can get um, kind of confused here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the polystar and I'm going to open up the position here. And to, to move this circle, basically to shrink down the circle, I adjust the Y position. So if you see if I move the Y position, that's what makes this um, move around uh, from the center, which can be very, 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 very confusing. But that's how it works. So I'm going to move this in a little bit. And now I want my, uh, I want my top star to be perfectly upright not this bottom one so I could go down here let's see if I can rotate it yeah I can rotate and you can see they're all rotating so let's go to the top and look at this one and make sure it's perfectly aligned let's set it to like I think it's 35 there we go um, also I did 50 stars but I think uh, I need to actually do some math here I need to go back to the rotation of the repeater and I need to make sure that these are all perfectly aligned because I don't even think these are 50 um, because that it loops around and around. So what I need to do is I actually need to do some math. So I'm going to pull up my calculator app. And if we think 360, now, now follow me here, 360 degrees divided by 50 equals 7.2. This is what I need to put in my rotation. So if I go to the rotation, this is the transformation properties of the repeater. I know this is mind blowing. It's set to 12 right now. So if I move this, now you're going to see um, that as I move that, that's what it's doing. So it's kind of overlapping there. If I move them like that, they overlap. So what I need to do is if I just simply type in 7.2, bam, now they're all perfectly aligned. I can actually see 50 now, but they're kind of overlapping. It's kind of nasty looking. So I'm going to go back to the polystar and let's go to the let's see transformation of the actual polystar and I think I can adjust the scale here there we go let's bring the scale down to like 50 no 70 that's looking okay and I can adjust the look even further by looking at this inner radius I see if I zoom back in on one of the stars um, you can see that I can adjust uh, inner and outer radius and give the stars you know like a totally unique look Go ahead and undo that because I'm happy with the default. Okay, now I'm ready to add uh, some shape layers. Actually, let me throw that seal graphic, uh, the, let me throw that eagle into the middle here. So I have this, um, this little graphic here. Let's throw that on top and scale it down. Okay. And now I just need to throw uh, my background on there. So to do that, I'm gonna grab the ellipse tool. Let's go back, ellipse tool. And now I'll go ahead and let's see if I can create it from the center. Actually, I don't need to do that dead center this time. I'm just gonna go ahead, hold the shift key, and kind of eyeball it. Then I'll go ahead and rename this background. And one other cool thing you can do is I can right click on this background and go to transform and make sure that my anchor point is in the center and then I could go ahead and align this and now it's perfectly aligned. Now I'm gonna pull up my reference and this is where I wanna change the colors here. Um, and I'll go open up the ellipse and if we see here, I have a stroke element and a fill element and we wanna kinda of change the order of this. First, I want my fill to be, this renders from the top to the bottom so first it'll show the fill um, then it'll show the stroke. So I'm going to open this up and there's a little eyedropper. 
I'm gonna go ahead and sample that color. Now we want this stroke, we wanna activate this stroke, and, um, well actually this fill first, um, let's turn off the stroke, because if you see here, it goes beyond the star, so I'm gonna go ahead and change the size of this ellipse path. We want it to be about right there, and you know what, I need to reorder some of this stuff. I'm gonna bring this to the bottom. And I need to go to my 50 stars, and I need to go ahead and change this to white, okay? Okay, so that's looking good. Now I'm gonna go back to the background, open that back up, and uh, let's see here. And shape layers are just so difficult sometimes. Okay, turn the stroke back on, and let's look at that stroke color. Um, we want the width to go out just past that text there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and sample that color over here. Looking good, and now I can add another stroke. Just simply go to Add, and go to Stroke, and then put it below Stroke 1. Open that up, adjust the width. Um, there it is. And now sample that gold, yellow, mustard color. And there we go, just like that, really fast uh, background. And we had a fill with two strokes, adjusting the width and sampling the colors of our main element here. I'm gonna go ahead and close this. Now, if you did wanna animate some of this, I can go up here, like the stars, for instance, I could add little rotations on all this stuff, like you know, have the stars rotating around, have the text rotating around. But if you notice, the text, uh, the anchor point is a little off. So everything is aligned, but the anchor point is not centered. So if I go to rotate this, um, let me see here rotate. If you've got to rotate this, you're going to see it's going to start to get out of alignment there. That's because of that anchor point, and it's actually centered around that mask. So things can get a little wonky here. So what I'm going to do is just grab this pan behind tool, shortcut key Y, and grab that, and then let's go ahead and snap that to the middle. And now when I go to rotate, it should be, yeah, it should be good. That's good to go. So if you do want to animate it, I suggest, you know, some kind of subtle subtle movements like that. And there is our presidential seal. Now, once again, this the tools and techniques that I explained in this tutorial, you can really apply to a number of different projects, whether you're creating just a simple circular symmetrical logo, um, these tools are gonna help you out. If you wanna download these project files, just follow the link in the video description. And don't forget to sign up for your two month free subscription to Skillshare. Follow my other link in the video description. Oh, and also if you wanna get this map design toolbox, this is a really, really cool, um, has a ton of different graphics. Like I said, I use this thing all the time for all different kinds of projects. Um, I'll have another link in the video description. And again, I'm not affiliated with this guy. It's just a really cool product that I wanna pimp out. And again, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up button. Let me know in the comment section and subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. That is a lot of stuff to ask from you, but it is appreciated, it helps, and I'll see you next time.